Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, this is your last chance. This image is the key to the number three clue we all missed. What is it? Take a good look. It feels like the media and social media provided every conceivable view of the human house, doesn't it? From the ground, from the air, through the fabric of the neighborhood, through the foliage. And yet, there was only one image that really provided insight into the killer's potential route, and it was this one. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. I must say lots of things are going on in Manhattan. There was just a a crane that, that collapsed that caught fire in midtown Manhattan. The more I think about this case, the more I feel like it's such a the kind of case that I was almost born to cover. Uh, my father is a property developer. My sister's an architect. I studied um, uh, quantity surveying uh, for a couple of years myself. And I was actually in Midtown Manhattan just a couple of weeks ago. A lot of the footage you're seeing on my channel is my original footage when I was there in June and also in April. I was also in South Carolina which is where Uriman's brother and his green Chevy Avalanche were recovered from. So I don't know about you, I'm enjoying coverage of this case. I'm finding it quite interesting, even though it's not typically what I do cover. I don't typically cover serial killers. But if you're finding my coverage interesting, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. I know what you're thinking and you're right. Oh, hold on, hold on one second. Okay, look. This is an emotional moment for all of us, okay? I know that. But let's not make snap judgments, please. You're perfectly correct to say we're speculating, we're assuming. Yes, we are. But we're doing it based on quite a lot of information. And so let's see where this takes us. If we are going to assume, we must also acknowledge at least two points of perspective. So here we go. Number one. No one witnessed Uriman bringing anyone home or anyone coming out, although one neighbor did say he sometimes saw Uriman sitting in his car, which was idling on the driveway late at night, and he said he thought it was suspicious. He also said that Uriman never moved, without exception, until Uriman, until he had gone inside. Then Uriman would do something himself. But the bottom line is we have no actual proof that any of the victims were brought home. And at the moment, no actual evidence either. We need to acknowledge that. Number two, at the same time, we also know that all the crimes connected to Hureman were committed when his wife was out of town. This suggests at the very least that he could have used the home as a staging area. Fair to say. Now, if we assume A, that the victims were brought home, then B, the victims also had to be taken out of the home. And that's really what we want to address here. But that also raises several additional problems. Did he get them inside under duress? Did they enter willingly? Did he lure them inside? And that word lure is going to come up again. I'll be coming back to that in a separate episode. Uh, and then also, did he carry them inside? Let's leave these questions open for the moment and ask the far more practical question, which route did he take if that's what he did? A. Would he take them through the front door? It's conceivable that if they weren't under duress that he'd bring them in or let them in through the front door. It's conceivable. B. If they were killed in Hureman's home, how did they end up here? This is actually the critical question. And also quite a complicated one. How long would it take? What route did he take? Did he use a car? Did he use a boat? What time did it take place? How did he execute the whole thing? Did he need a shovel? Was it weather related? Did he not go home at all? Anyway, let's start with the first phase of the potential removal of a body from the house. Number one. He doesn't come out of the front door. So whether or not he goes in through the front door or she goes in through the, through the front door, he doesn't come out of the front door. We're assuming that. Number two, he doesn't go to the left, his right, 
because that section of the home is closer to a nearby road and also fairly visible to line of sight. Have a look at the vegetation on the left side of the periphery of the garden compared to the right side. That's looking at it from the rear angle. No, instead he comes out of the basement trapdoors, turns to his left, and then under shielding from many peripheral trees, that's from the top, from the sides, uh, what he would also have is pitch dark at night. He would then sneak along the narrow boundary between the house and the periphery of the property on the other side. Now, when he emerges, he's right beside his vehicle, but shielded by the hedge and the dark alleyway. It's a much better option than taking the longer route around the other side and then walking in plain sight across the front garden. Even if there are ring cameras in the neighborhood or across the road, they likely can't see into this left-hand corner of the driveway. Does that make sense? And isn't this enclosed vehicle and the Chevrolet Avalanche, which seem to be fixtures on the driveway, aren't they there for added visual shielding? We have reason to believe the green Chevy Avalanche may be connected with the crimes. You have a witness saying that he saw the vehicle. If that's the case, how did the killer get the victims from the house and into the green Chevy? Well, we seem to have offered a possible solution to that problem. The quickest, safest and most secretive route from the basement trapdoors in the back to a vehicle is through this side route. That is the number three clue we all missed. Only one of my patrons guessed it right. You know who you are. Well done. The next clue we're going to deal with is clue number five, and it's on this infographic. Take a close look at it. So once we've completed clue number five, we're going to return to a area that I feel I know a little bit more about, which is the killer psychology. And there's something that has been in plain sight all this time that I don't think anyone has spoken about. That'll be clue number six. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.